Good morning. Aron Susday. It's great to see you this morning. The last time I was here was 2019. And I think you're a lot better looking now than you were then. Come on, how many love Jesus this morning? That's awesome. Hey, before I jump in and share some thoughts with you this morning. I want to tell you how honored I am to be with you. I would consider you family. It was back in 1982 where a lot of our leaders began having a dream about you, Cambodia. And over the years, we've had the privilege to send people and to sow into this beautiful nation. And so when I'm here today, I feel like I'm home. Amen. Amen. I also want to give honor where honor is due. I've had the wonderful privilege of building a very close personal relationship with Pastor Samadhi and Navi. And also with Pastor Mara and Leah. And I know what you have faced over the last couple of years. Just a short time ago, this nation was shut down. And your pastor was able to navigate and to help you through some of the most difficult times. And I've grown to love and respect. I believe that he's a leader for this nation and the world. And, and most importantly, I'm glad to call you friend. Would you honor your pastor today and just tell him how much you love him and appreciate I also have some other friends with us all the way from Dallas, Texas. Uh, Pastor David and Pastor Josh from Gateway Church. This is American humor, so it may not translate, but I'll say it anyways. When I grow up, I want to be just like you. <laughs> uh, beautiful church loves the world, deeply engaged in Cambodia as well. And one more time, put your hands together for all that they do for you and for this beautiful nation. As we were talking about this trip, Pastor Somedy shared something that was on his heart for you as a people. And he sensed that the Holy Spirit wanted to put a theme upon you, and that theme is grow. And I believe this is more than just a theme. I don't think it's just another cute sermon series. I believe it's the mind of God for you. And because we believe that God speaks to his people, this is a season and a time for you to really lean in. Because the word grow is not just for you as a church. 
The word grow is for you as a person. Wherever you are at in your walk with Jesus. Or maybe you have not yet started a relationship with Jesus. God's speaking to you right now. He knows where you're at. He knows your journey. He knows your needs and your challenges. He, he knows your dreams and your desires. He knows that because he created you. And he created you to grow. And when we look at creation as we know it, just a sec, they're taking a picture. Let's smile. Good, thank you. Um, oh. <laughs> Everything God created, He intended it to grow. A plant is intended to grow. And the growth is intended to bring fruit. When God creates something, He creates it with a purpose. Animals were intended to grow. Us as humans are intended to grow. And thank God our children are intended to grow. But we're not just to grow naturally, we're supposed to grow spiritually. Because we're just not natural beings, we're spiritual beings. And God wants us to know that He created us for something significant. Listen, you are not an accident. You're not a mistake. You are not average. You are unique. God created every one of you unlike any other person on planet Earth. And sadly, we spend all of our lives trying to be like someone else and we forget to be who God created us And God placed you here in 2023. And you're like unlike any other person ever created. You're significant. You matter to God. This church would not be complete without you. This applies to you. This applies to you. You're not average. There's a call of God upon your life. God's going to do great things through you. And you've got to settle in your spirit. That you can touch nations for your inheritance. The very first thing that God spoke to humanity was a word about growth. He said, be fruitful. Multiply. Fill the earth. Subdue it. He wanted you to get nations in your mind. He wanted you to know that if God is with you, all, thing, all things are possible. And there's nations that are in you. 
And even you as a young beautiful lady God will use you in a very special way. Why? Because we were created to grow. We were created to do great things for God. And we have to start this morning with that premise. We, we have to start this morning with this basic idea. That God created us to grow. In the Bible, there's a book called Colossians. And it was written by a man named Paul. And he wrote to a people in Colossae, much like our culture today, much like the Cambodian culture. He understood the revelation that I'm talking about this morning. As he looked upon the people throughout Colossae, he could see the seeds of greatness. But he understood the people weren't educated in biblical knowledge. They lived in a land with many gods and religions. There are a lot of different humanistic philosophies. They were being bombarded by carnal temptations. And it's in this context that he writes these four chapters to a people like you and me. And I want to look at one portion of scripture in chapter 2 of Colossians. And I want to help us understand three things that Paul's trying to help us with. Number one, you got to know. I'll explain what that means. Number two, you've got to grow. And the reason you got to grow is number three. It's because you got to go. There's a purpose for your life. You got to know. You got to grow. And you got to go. So if you have your Bibles, you would open up to Colossians chapter 2. And we're going to read verses 1 through 8 this morning. Together. Colossians chapter 2. នឹងអស់អ្នកដែលមិនធ្លាប់បានឃើញមុខខ្ញុំផ្ទាល់គឺខ្ញុំចង់ ដោយពាក្យសម្ដីពីរួបពីរួសនោះឡើយថ្វីធ្វិតតែរូបកាយខ្ញុំនៅឆ្ងាយពីបងប្អូនតែចិត្តខ្ញុំនៅជាប់
It's some of the most powerful words in the Greek language. He says, I want you to know this isn't some casual statement. It's not like he's saying, I want you to know who won the World Cup. It wasn't Cambodia. He's not saying, I want you to know what's on TikTok or Instagram. The phrase implies life and death. Before he begins to give these truths, he's trying to shake their shoulders. He's trying, he's trying to get the distractions out of their way. And it's not like I want you to know. He's saying you got to know. Listen, your life depends on knowing what I'm about to tell you. The entire reason why you exist is in your ability to understand what I'm about to say. And he springs board off of this statement that he made just prior in chapter 1. And he says that in God that he created all things. And that he created you and me. And all things were created by him and for him. Meaning that your life is not your own. He already had a plan for you before you even were created. That's why you're here today. That's why you work where you work. And that's why you live where you live. That's not by accident. That's by divine design. He's the creator. We're the creator. And you got to know why you're here. Because he has a plan for your life. And not only do we need to know that we are here to glorify him, but there's a purpose for your life. And Paul's wanting to make sure that we understand this. Is that we understand that he created us. And that he has a plan for us. But Paul attaches this to a really important phrase. He says the only way that you're ever going to really understand this revelation. Is by having a personal intimate relationship with Christ. It's not just knowing of Jesus. It is having an intimate personal relationship with Jesus. That's why he says in Colossians 2. The scripture that we just read. He says, I want you to understand all the mysteries of God. But he says, those are found namely in Christ. And he says, it's in Christ that all the hidden treasures are found. That you find your purpose. That you find why you're here. And the answers to everything that you need to thrive and grow in this world. So he says you gotta, you've got to be able to know that he created you. 
To know Jesus. And to do great things for him. But here's where I want to spend the remainder of our time. He then takes the responsibility and he places it in your hands. He shows you the canvas and he says, I've got great things in store for you. And I, I created you to do great things. And I'm giving you everything that you need. In other words, you got to know. But then he says this. You got to grow. That it's your responsibility to grow. He can't do that for you. Yes, he can create this world and all the stars. But even God himself can't pray for you. He can't read the Bible for you. He can't give for you. He can't serve for you. And he says, if you want this kind of greatness in your life that I'm trying to get you to see, you've got to do your part to get there. Saying, I'm going to help you along the way. But I'm relying on you to get there. It's called personal responsibility. And we find in this scripture an analogy that I'm going to use like that of a plant. Again, we understand that in a seed, like an apple seed, is a tree. And you find that the level of the fruit starts, first of all, in the health of the root. And how you nurture that seed determines if it becomes as fruitful as it was intended to. My wife and I, we just finished building a new house. And on the side of the house, my wife wanted a big garden. My wife loves to garden. I don't. She loves to play in the dirt. Not me. She understands something. That the level of the soil. How much water. How much sun. The removal of weeds. The consistent daily discipline of that garden. Will determine the level of that fruit. Most of us in this room. We've received the incorruptible seed of Christ in our hearts. In that seed is greatness. What you do with it determines if it will be great. So let me give you six quick things that I believe every person can do if you want to see your life grow. Whether you've never given your life to Jesus, 
Whether you did last week, or whether you've been a Christian like me and Cindy for decades. These principles apply every day. So if you want to grow, the first thing you need to do is you need to grow in the church family. God never created you to follow Jesus on your own. If we were to take a seed and put it on the sidewalk, it would never grow. The best chance it has is to put it in a pot. Because the pot contains the soil, it's able to hold the water. It gives a place for the roots to push against something that's stable. In order for us to grow, we need the same in our lives. The, yeah, in the book of Hebrews tells you and me that we, we should not forsake the fellowship of the people. It's not because we should just be in church so that it looks good. It's because it's here that we find friendship. And relationship. Nourishment. Encouragement. Accountability. Protection. Help in time of need. We need the church. I know in my life, when I got saved in 1982, I was a high school dropout. I was, I was strung out on drugs and alcoholic. I was wanted for a bunch of violent crimes, warrants for my arrest. And it was the church that helped save my life. And yes, I am who I am because of Jesus. But I am who I am because of people that came alongside of me. What would it look like this year? If every single person in this room online that could hear my voice that you would say this 2023 is my year to commit myself wholeheartedly to this church not just in attendance but giving your heart giving your life being faithful Today marks the sign-ups or registration for the LG course. If you've not signed up for this foundation course, this is your responsibility to take that step. What would it look like if you left and went and signed up today in the foyer? I'm going to make a decision to grow. And maybe it's you need to get find a place to serve. Maybe you need to commit in the area of giving. But God wants us to do more than just spectate. He wants us to participate. Let's be honest for one second. How many people here feel that they could do a little bit better in their commitment to the church? 
the room. That's okay, we're all there. I'm raising my hand. If you have your hand up, let me pray for you. In Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for every person with their hand raised. Lord, right now, you guide them and you direct them to where they need to engage to grow. Lord, let this church be healthier as a result of this prayer. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come on. Here's the second thing. Is you not only need to be committed to the church family, but you need to grow in community. There, there's no way that you can build the relationships that you need in this big of a room. And when you think of a plant or a seed thriving, it needs soil, not just a pot. And it's in the soil that the seed is set where it finds the nourishment. And as the first century church was birthed, one of the first things that they did was meet in homes. Says they met house to house. And in Acts 2, you read what they did. They broke bread together. They prayed together. It says they devoted themselves one to another. They studied the word of God together. They shared generously with each other. And something happened in those groups. It caused an entire city to be turned upside down for Jesus. I want you to hear me right now. When you leave here today, and you walk out the doors, and you turn to the left, you're going to see the vision board there. And you're going to see these clusters of groups. Listen, this isn't a pastor's sanity idea. This is a God idea. I want you to look at that board. And I want you to say this. That's me. I'm in the middle of a circle. I'm going to get people around me. I'm going to multiply myself. Because I want to be a part of turning Cambodia upside down Come on, are you with me? Are you with me? Come on, in Jesus' name. Help us to grow in groups. Here's the third way that we need to grow. We need to grow in our church. We need to grow in groups. We need to grow in the Word of God. If the seed doesn't have water, it won't grow. So we put the seed in a pot and we put soil around it. But you've got to pour water on it. Water is what brings life. Ephesians 5 tells us this. That he makes us holy and clean by, by the washing and watering of the word of God in our lives. The word of God transforms us. It guides us. It strengthens us. 
challenges us. It gives us the truth that we need in difficult circumstances. I want to encourage you this year. As Paul encourages us throughout his epistles. Start your day by eating the word of God. Thirst for the word of God. Here's the fourth one. Is that we need to grow in prayer. Again, and prayer represents for us the air. We, we, we need ourselves to be able to excuse me, I'm so sorry. The, 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 the air represents the Holy Spirit. If there was ever a time where we needed the presence of God in our lives, it's today. Life has life been a challenge for anybody over the last couple of years. I'm thankful that the Holy Spirit has come to help me. And to strengthen me. And to guide me. And to help me. When God even created mankind, the first thing that he did is he took up the dust. And he breathed. The breath of God brought life. Maybe today you have dead spots in your life. Maybe your marriage feels dead. Maybe you're struggling with depression. Maybe you feel lonely. Maybe you need some direction on what to do with your life. Why not lean into the Holy Spirit? Holy Spirit, breathe upon me. You promise you'd be my helper. That you would speak to me. I believe in the days to come. Life, New Life Fellowship. This year, it's going to be a fresh wave of the Holy Spirit. Listen to me. There's going to be people that are going to be healed. In fact, right now, if you need healing in your body, I want you to stand. Why not here and why not now? You need Jesus to heal your body. I want you to stand. As we were worshiping, I felt like God wanted to heal some people with intestine problems. I felt that there were some people that were struggling with diabetes. Even possibly some back issues. Maybe you're here and you're struggling with depression. You've even thought about taking your life. Come on, the Holy Spirit can touch you now. There's freedom and victory for you right now. Come on. If you're here standing, and you need the Holy Spirit to breathe upon you right now, I want you to lift your hands. My job is just to pray and believe. It's the Holy Spirit's job to show up. Now, Jesus, as you look across this place, you see the desperate needs of your people. 
Lord, we believe that there's a fresh wind of the Holy Spirit upon this house. Lord, we sense that you're going to do great things in this nation. And Lord, throughout history, we see you move on the foundation of healing and miracles. And Lord, today, Lord, we're praying that you would move by the power of your Holy Spirit in this place right now upon your people Lord I pray in the name of Jesus that every person with their hands raised Lord would be healed in Jesus name in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth I say be healed sickness be gone Lord, emotional sickness be gone. Lord, touch bodies right now. Cancer be gone. Diabetes be gone. Barrenness be gone. Barrenness, no baby. Barrenness. Lord, move today. Lord, we're not embarrassed to ask daring prayers. God, you're the God of yesterday, today, and forever. So, Lord, let today mark a healing the miracles of your people in the mighty name of Jesus in Jesus name come on give him glory right now come on Jesus name come on if you're here if you're here and we prayed for you and you felt the Holy Spirit touch you just wave at me right here so I felt like God did something in my body come on look around the room come on Jesus name thank you Lord thank you Lord time will tell but we thank you Lord we believe let me just mention these last two you can be seated we're done I think this is a season that we need to grow in prayer Paul said in Colossians you keep playing because it feels really good you can keep playing he says devote yourselves to prayer let me just say this some of the greatest days for you as a church are ahead let me also say this some of the greatest challenges for this church are ahead anytime that you begin to grow you begin to expand the enemy wants to come in to stop growth can I encourage you as a friend if you want to grow to a new level increase your prayer life I get up every morning and I spend at least two hours with the Lord not because I think I'm spiritual but because I know I'm not like I don't know what I would do today without him I don't know what tacks are coming my way. I want to be sober and alert. 
But that young chung, three clun, which is right, no picket can of Joma dog. If I'm going to grow today, but send young chung rich around the tiny, it's going to be because I have a relationship with the Father. The Santa Canyon, my mint and at the long, I have my page moon. And lastly, is this, and I pray. We need to grow in wisdom. As we read that scripture just before, it talks about that there are many attacks that was coming against the Colossians. That there were vain philosophies and human traditions and different things that were derailing God's people. We're immersed in a time where there's lots of noise and distractions. That's why Peter tells us that we need to be sober, sober and vigilant. We need to be careful, be alert. Because the enemy is seeking to devour you. There's lots of insects and bugs that come to destroy growth. This is a time where we need to pray and get those off of our lives. Can I hear an amen? Amen. Let me just do this as, as we finish today. I'm going to ask you to stand to your feet. And I want you to bow your head and close your eyes. I just want you to take a moment just between you and Jesus. And I want to make sure if there's anybody in this room today that has never asked Jesus into their heart to be their Lord and Savior. You walked in here today. You know that you're far from God. That you need Him in your life. If that's you today, and you're saying, Pastor Mark, I need Jesus. I need you to come into my life. I need you to forgive me of my sins. I need you to be my Lord and Savior. And I need you to help me follow you all the days of my life. With every eye closed and every head bowed, I just want you to lift your hand. Say, Pastor Mark, I need Jesus today. For the first time, for the first time, I want to ask Jesus into my heart. Put your hand up if that's you. If that's you, just lift your hand. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else in the back? Thank you, thank you. Oh, good, no, good, this is your no, first time. Say, Jesus, I need you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Jesus, we thank you for these people. Lord, I pray right now that you come and fill their lives. Forgive them of their sins. Help them to follow you all the days of their life. In Jesus' name. If you raise your hand today, I'm going to ask you to do something. As I close this service in a minute, There'll be some people up front, some ministry team people. If you want to grow, come forward and let them pray for you. And lastly, let me just pray this. If you're here, and you're saying, I have some areas in my life, I mentioned six of them, that I need to grow in. 
ขยมตัวกับล้างเลือกล้างผมมวยจุ่มหน่อยเด็กขยมหนึ่งใหญ่ท่าประสันบ้านมีจุ่มหน่อยน้ำมวยเด็กขยมท่าขยมตะการได้จุ่มหน่อยนักขยมจุ่มหน่อยมวยนุ่ง And you're saying I'm going to make a commitment to grow. ได้เยอะหนึ่งใหญ่ท่าขยมหนังพลังงานเช่นหนังขยมช้างปีปอมไพ่ใบนี้หนังริจุ่มหน่อยล้างเอาชีวิตไปจุ่มหน่อยทอร์ซ่าประสันจิกาพลังงานเช่นหนังบอมบ์โอนหักขยมจังริจุ่มหน่อยล้างหนังขยมช้างนี้แต่ผมมวยจุ่มหน่อยริจุ่มหน่อยน้ำมวยขยมมวยจุ่มหน่อยนุ่งสมเลือกไหน Jesus help me to read my Bible more. ปรองสมช่วยตัวบุคคลเอาพระมาตัวปองชราจิมุน To pray more. อธิษฐานชราจิมุน To rely on the Holy Spirit. ได้เพิ่งอ่านเรื่องพระวิญญาณบริสุทธิ์ชราจิมุน I'm going to get in an in an in an LG class. ตัวบุคคลจังกมิดรักงานนำไปช่วยเรียนทนายมูลทางคริสเตียนเซนนำไปช่วยพลังงานตัวบุคคลในจุดนั้นตัวบุคคลนำสไปรักกรมมนุษย์นำไปช่วยตัวบุคคลจะตั้งกรมโต๊ะ Lord, we pray. ปรองยังอธิษฐาน Lord for This beautiful family. To bring comfort to us, to bring hope to us. For new life fellowship. For every hand marked. Lord, let this be more than just a season of growth. Let it be a season of go. God use this church and these people as we commit to grow to touch this nation for Jesus. God, we pray it. We believe it. And we're going to live it. In the mighty name of Jesus. And if you believe that prayer, give Jesus a big old shout today. Come on. Amen. Amen. Amen.